in the Khalakhari there's during the hot summer months, which is the months that we prefer to, to capture images, um, there are the odd day where a cold front comes in and it, and it, and it, is, it is cool or relatively cold in the evenings, um, of course relative to, to Kalahari temperatures. And those are the days when, they are, when it's overcast that one has to decide whether you want to stay in the bungalow and just relax and take a day off, or you want to go into the park and, and a, um, a predetermined specific spots to actually capture um, motion uh, images of, of the wildlife, in other words, slow shutter images. And um, to do that, we need the backgrounds, you know, to be as smooth as possible, less distraction, because the smooth or the, or the movement photography picks up all the black spots and dark spots at the back. So we need as smooth as possible with a bit of contrast to give you some stripes. And, um, and of course, when you do slow shutter, you do, you do quite a lot of images because the, 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 the shutter has got to be specifically correct to get one part of, of the antelope or the animal in, in relatively sharp um, focus and the rest should, should blur in the direction that, that, you, that you predetermined. So, so you take quite a lot of images, but there's only a few that actually um, can be used for that. Of all the images that we've tried, and I think there's quite a lot, we should actually show them. Um, but these, I think there's one, two, three, three images that, that work. If you, if you look at this image over here, you can see that it's got some nice motion. It's got an angle that's chasing this one. It's got the mud, it's got the mud um, that's splashing over here. You've got the rest of the herd over there that detracts a bit of it. But you got some nice motion. You can see that he's running away. But over there, you can see that there's some some actually very nice lines, but they're not that well accentuated. So if you do a black and white and push the contrast, you can actually see that the lines of motion uh, and some have been sharpened so that you get a better image. Um, that you get a better image. So we've cropped some of that, some of that original image that we've talked about over there, the dark areas. You could leave it over there if if they've moved, but the fast movement were this to over here. It was done black and white. It was cropped, and then the and the contrast um, was pushed. Um, a slight type of HDR. We'll do the editing later, and and that is the. That is the other image that we've got. Um, of course, if, if you move, the, the challenge was to, to get um, a close-up of, of the blue wildebeest and to get something sharp. So you can see most of it is blurred. It gives you a very clear line at the bottom of here. There's some of the tail that wants to be sharp over there. Nice lines that needs to be accentuated. And of course, if you blow this image up, it'll be nice. But over here, you can see some of the main wants to be sharp. And you got the lines that it creates the or accentuates the motion. The tail is in, the feet is in. It is not cropped. It was exactly as it is. But over there is the sharp circular area that shows you that's the piece that will that was that was still, and it's actually the only piece that sharpened. So the so the the core of the image over there and the main. Once again, also if you do that and over accentuate it with um, a black and white, so the the the, um, the motion comes out, and it gives you that circular movement, which is accentuated again by the by the main and by the rips over here, and and an image that that can be used. That was the color one. So once again, that was the straightforward image. It's got a bit of haze. It's not, it's not sharp. So if you sharpen it, this is what you get. Very nice image. I actually prefer it to the black and white. But that's, that's um, on 1 15th of a second or 1 30th of a second. We'll show that in the editing suite. And what was important, the most important, this image is to try and to keep it within the within the f full frame of the of the image, and then keep on going, keep on panning until you get one of the images that's got some sharpening. Here you can see the eye still, 
the horns, the manes, and like I say over there, and at the tail, if you sharpen it a bit, and it's got that straight lines, and of course, that detracts a bit at the back there, but it's, we could not remove it. The third image was this one, um, where the others were quite still, and he was the one that's running, so we concentrated on him, and because we concentrate on him, he's more sharp. You can see those completely out of focus. Um, not, not really sharp, although over there you've got some, some idea. Uh, the black and white, if you do that, it's quite a different artistic image. Um, it has not got a lot of sharp, but all over here you've got an area that, that is sharp, and then once again the tail wants to be sharp, and we've cropped off the top and the bottom to once again accentuate that. So, so here's your three, three raw images, as it is, could also be used. And, and this is the one, black and white. And that's our motion session. All possible because of serious overcast conditions and um, very low ISO, as low as you can, 100 ISO or, or lower, and a very low, small aperture of F22. We're not worried about the quality on the and the vignetting and so on because we want the motion blur and, and at least something. 